This is another conservation of energy problem, only this time we have a spring. I do some work to compress the spring. I use all that work I've done that's now converted into elastic potential energy. And I use it to push a mass along a horizontal plane. Of course, that horizontal plane has friction. Here's my spring. Probably I could use a better spring. Here's my spring. I compress it. I do work compressing that spring. I now have elastic potential energy equal to the work I do to compress the spring, which amounts to 1 half k x squared, x being the amount of compression, and k is the spring constant. Book's law, remember, f equals minus kx, the minus is a restoring force, blah, blah, blah. My point is, I now have a rough surface mu, the coefficient of friction is what I'm trying to find. I take some mass m, I put it on that surface after I've compressed the spring. Now, I let go of the spring. I release the energy. The mass now gets propelled forward, and that elastic potential energy gets converted to kinetic energy of the mass, 1 half mv squared. Now, Newton's first law would tell me that this mass would go in a straight line at a constant rate forever and ever and ever. However, however, there's a frictional force opposing the motion. And after the mass moves along d meters, it comes to rest. Now, what is mu in that case? Well, I use the word kinetic energy theorem. When it comes to rest, the kinetic energy is zippo. The change in kinetic energy is the work done by friction. That is the work kinetic energy theorem. The change in kinetic energy, well, this is how much we started with. We end up with nothing. The work done by friction is going to be that frictional force applied for d meters, this distance that the block moved before it finally came to rest. Now, what is the frictional force? It's mu times the normal, of course. What's the normal force? Well, fortunately, this is a nice horizontal table, floor, what have you, so we just have mu mg for the normal force, um, mg for the normal force, mu mg for the frictional force, mu mgd for the work done by friction, and this is how much energy we started with. We don't really care, frankly, about how fast this actually went initially. What we do know is the K and the amount, the K of the spring and the amount I uh, compress the spring. So really this intermediate step of getting kinetic energy is something you could skip. If you want to work that hard to find out the initial velocity, uh, the mass when it um, leaves the spring after the spring has been restored to its uh, equilibrium position. Well, you're welcome to do that, but that's just one more place that you could make a mistake. Now, the units of work and energy in general are joules, but don't forget, you're looking for mu, and that is the dimensionless uh, coefficient of friction. Frankly, if you took kx squared and divided by mgd, all your units would go away, providing you're working in SI units, which is my recommendation, uh, that will be mu.